Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. So as you may have seen, I'm finally getting a second 3D printer and trust me, it's just the beginning of my 3D printing empire. But I do have some bad news. So unfortunately, I posted the poll at the last minute before the 11.11 shopping event in China, which if you haven't heard is like the Black Friday or Cyber Monday event, but of China. So I was trying to lock in a great deal on a 3D printer and I did purchase a 3D printer that was in the lead of the poll at the time, but it's not the printer that ended up winning at the end of the poll. So with that being said, I acted prematurely and bought the wrong printer. So in the future, I will live by the poll and I won't act so hastily. But with that out of the way, let's dive right in and see what printer I actually got. That's right, I got the Creality CR30 belt printer. Normally these printers go for $1,000 on Amazon or about $850 on Taobao, but during the Double Eleven shopping event, I got this one for a steal, just $680. Looks like the instruction manual, a nice mini spool of free filament. This looks to be some spare nozzles and some hardware to assemble the printer. SD card, ooh, eight gigabytes. In here we've got the holder for the spool. Over here looks like some cable ties and something else heavy. Here we've got a switch and some wires. The power cable. Oh. Here we've got some Bowden tube. Now it looks like I should lift this whole thing out of here. And this is connected by some wires, so I have to be careful. Some pieces of the frame here. And more pieces of the frame. There we go. There is the nice belt. Probably shouldn't touch it. Here is the rest of the printer and frame. Um, at this point, I should probably read the instruction manual before I do much more. So let's do that. All right, I've now read the instruction manual and I'll be posting some of those pages along the video as we go. So for the most part, one person can set up this printer, but getting the printer out of the box is probably the most difficult or awkward part of this process. As for me, I just had a couple cat helpers during this process, and you know how that goes. Sometimes they were less than helpful. The first step here was to assemble these diagonal frame pieces on the front side of the printer here. And as expected, all the tools and hardware needed to assemble the printer were provided. So the next step is to assemble this carriage on the rear side. I thought this was gonna be difficult with one person, but actually it was pretty easy. This carriage design was thought through pretty well so that when you set it on top there, it holds itself in place pretty well, actually. Then once that's assembled, you'll go around to all the corners and assemble bolts from all sorts of different directions. And once this is done and bolted together, this frame is really solid. I like to think of it as my big tank printer. So once I got all my bolts assembled, it's really important. I like to measure the diagonals across the frame there just to ensure that the printer frame is assembled square. If not, I have to go back and make some adjustments and make sure I have a square frame. The next step is to assemble the spool holder. So that is the same one that comes with the Ender 3. So just a couple T-nuts and you're ready to go. The next step is to install the LCD display. So again, just two T-nuts and that slides into the frame and locks into place. After that, it's time to finish up the miscellaneous connections around the printer. So first up is the Bowden tube. Next will be the filament runout sensor right next to the extruder. Now flipping down to the bottom side of the printer, next we'll be connecting the Y-axis limit switch. Then also on the bottom side of the printer, make sure the LCD display ribbon cable is fully plugged in. And then one of the most important steps of the printer setup is selecting the right voltage for your power supply on the front of the printer. If you have this switch set to the wrong setting, you can damage your power supply and other components on your printer. So make sure to check that before you plug in the power wire. 
Next up is bed leveling. So you're supposed to manually move the nozzle down so it's just touching the bed and adjust the limit switch. But here's where I found some problems. I'm not sure if you can see this, but when I move the gantry down, there's a definite sticking point right there. So I found out the sticking point happens several times across the movement here. There it is again. There it is again. So I marked a dot on these pulleys to see if it aligned with the pulley location and it did not. Then I added a mark on the wheels here and as you can see it exactly follows the wheel location. So I think the sticking point has something to do with these rollers. Sure enough I checked and these eccentric nuts were over tightened causing a sticking point so I adjusted those and now it's very smooth. And now for the bed leveling. This might be a little bit different than what we're typically used to since this belt is very important and easy to damage, the first thing we want to do is set hard stops that will physically stop the nozzle from tearing into the bed. So we can see here there's one on the left side as well as one on the right side. Once we're done setting the hard stops, then we can do some fine tuning here on the photoelectric sensor, which is used for the Y axis. And finally, to get the perfect level, we can use these screws in the corner of the bed for fine tuning. Now with the printer powered on, it's time to get into preheating and functional testing. I've noticed this printer has a little bit longer boot up time than the Ender 3, so I'm not sure if that's the control board inside that's different that would be causing that. Similar to an Ender 3, we'll just go to temperature and nozzle and preheat that to 200 degrees. While that's heating, let's break out the filament. Make sure your filament has no tangles in it and we'll cut the end at 45 degrees. Now to load the spool onto the printer and we'll feed it through the filament sensing guide here and then we'll feed it into the extruder and then we'll push it all the way through the long Bowden tube until it starts oozing out of the nozzle. Now before we start printing, let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the different axes. So first up is the x-axis. This one is the one moving horizontally across the bed. Next up is the y-axis. This is the one at an angle that moves the nozzle towards and away from the bed. And finally the z-axis. This is just the rolling belt on the base of the printer. The movement of this belt is what makes your layers in your print. Now let's give the extruder a test to make sure the filament is coming out freely. So now it's time to pop the SD card in and get printing some of the preloaded files. I guess we'll start with uh, Yuan Zhu. I have no idea what this thing could be, but I'm pretty excited for my first print. All right, it looks like it finished printing this uh, cube with a cylinder on top. Uh, I have no idea what it's doing, but now it's uh, starting to print something new. Oh no, it's only 10% done, so I guess it's trying to print uh, 10 of these things? Yeah, I don't know that I need that many of these things. So these things appear to be pretty useless. I'm really not sure what they are, but if you know, you can let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, on to printing something totally more useful. How about a Benchy? We're printing a Benchy from a totally different angle, so we're probably going to find all sorts of fun new things. So let's take a look at the benchy here and how it turned out. Um, this side looks really nice, really smooth. And then we turn around to this side and not so smooth. So I'm guessing we probably should have had some supported edges on this bottom here and maybe at the top of the cabin here. Seems like there's definitely going to be some new rules and a learning curve to this 45 degree belt printer. So now let's take a look at the slicing software for this 3D printer. Right away we can see there's a, an infinity long runway here. I guess that works since this printer can technically print things that are infinity long. So that's awesome. So I was concerned with having to learn a new slicing software just for this printer. But if we pop open the settings here, it's basically the same as Kira. So all these things are familiar and look the same as they do in Kira. So that's great. But we can also see up here there's a Creality belt. So in this area, it looks like they've grouped together things that are specific to belt printers, which is great. So it's all in one easy spot to find. So just for fun, let's try and load a model in here. I can load up this master sword model from Zelda. This long sword model is great for this printer since it is too long to fit on your standard printer. Uh, we'll have to reorient it here and move it around so it can fit on the belt. Looks like we'll have to scale it down just ever so slightly so it fits on the belt. I think this Master Sword will be the maiden voyage for this printer, but unfortunately didn't have time to fit in the video for today. But we've got it sliced up here and we see it will be a 25 hour print. And a few cleanup items before we finish up this video. This printer's a tank, it is heavy. 
We can see here it's about 15 kilograms, which is about 33 pounds. Now compare that to this Ender 3 V2, which is about 8.3 kilograms or 18 and a half pounds. It's almost twice as heavy. And in terms of noise, it's not that quiet either. It's about 58 to 60 decibels when printing, and sometimes it's up to 65 decibels when you turn it on and the fan is grinding on the bottom. But I can already say I'm just scratching the surface with this 3D printer. And that'll be the end of the video for today. I'm working on a gigantic print of the Master Sword, so I'm working to get that out as soon as I can. I'm still very new to this printer and haven't used it enough to make any final conclusions yet, but what I can say is it's not as easy to use as your typical Ender 3. And for that reason, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody as their first printer. But I'm still very eager to learn and try out some new monster prints that I wouldn't be able to do with my Ender 3 over there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.